Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Question says, سائل يسأل فيقول هل الاستحمام يكفي عن الوضوء أرشدونا في ذلك جزاكم الله عنا خير الجزاء When a person makes a ghusl you take the ritual bath or the ritual shower the ritual washing a ghusl does the ghusl suffice or substitute or dispense or take the place of wudu does the ghusl Envelop an umbrella over the wudu as well. Meaning, a person broke his wudu and also became junub. A person, uh, a woman, she broke her wudu and she got her menses. Okay, when I make a ghusl, for whatever reason I'm making the ghusl, do I have to make a wudu as well? Or is the ghusl uh, enough to dominate and... And shroud the ghusl and take over the ghusl. It it swallows up both of the ways of purification or just one. Al Jawab the answer says A Sunnatu and Yatawada Awalan Budu Asarati Kamilan O illa Rijlehi Thumma Yagtasila Lil Janaba Thumma Yagsil Rijlehi Badadarika Ida Kana Lam Yagsilha Wan Kana Gasalaha Fal Yagsilha Maratan Ukra Amalan Misunna. Answer says is that the sunnah, the hadiths prove is that the recommended way is to perform the wudu before you make the ghusl. As when you're making a ghusl is to make wudu before the ghusl. Just like you would make the wudu for the normal salah. With exceptions to the feet. Wash everything like you would normally perform the wudu with exceptions to the feet. Then afterwards... You perform the Janaba Ghusl. You perform the Janaba Ghusl. And then you can wash your feet at the end of the Ghusl if you hadn't washed them during the Ghusl. And as far as if a person washed them during the Ghusl, then there's nothing wrong with washing them again at the end of the Ghusl to accurately and specifically implement the recommended Sunnah. That's with regards to Janaba. وَإِنْ نَوَى الْحَدَثَيْنِ جَمِيعًا وَاغْتَسَلَ غُسْلًا كَامِلًا وَلَمْ يَخُصَّ الْوُضُوء بِعَمَالِهِ أَجْزَأَ عَنْهُ عِنْدَ جَمْعٍ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ بِنِيَةِ الْحَدَثَيْنِ As far as if a person doesn't want to do that, and a person makes the intention that I'm going to remove my janaba, I'm going to remove the other reason behind my wudu being broken, I'm going to have two intentions. I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. I'm going to perform the ghusl and wudu, the purification for both of them at once. And I'm just going to make a complete ghusl without making a specific wudu. Then according to many scholars, that's valid. According to many scholars, that is valid and that is correct and that is okay to do. Just to make a ghusl without performing the recommended wudu before the ghusl. وَلَكِنَّ الْأَوْلَى وَالْأَفْضَلَ وَالسُنَّةَ أَنْ يَتَوَضَعَ وُدُوءَ الصَّلَاةِ كما فعله النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بعد الاستنجاء يستنجي ويغسل ذكره وما حوله ويتوضأ وضوء الصلاة ثم يكمل غسل غسل الجنابة هذا هو السنة وهذا هو الأفضل. He says, however, the best thing to do and the safest thing to do and the recommended thing to do is to first make your wudu like you would perform for salah like the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم did. First, the Prophet ﷺ would wash off his private area. He would clean his private area. And anything around it that came from Janaba, he would wash that. Then he would perform the wudu. And then he would make the ghusl of Janaba. That is the recommended, preferred way of doing it. Amma ghusl tabarrud or ghusl juma'a fahada la yakfi an al wudu. بل لا بد من الوضوء فيتوضأ ثم يغتسل أو يغتسل أولا ثم يتوضأ. As far as washing up for pure hygiene, nothing to do with spirituality, no type of ritual bathing, just washing up to be clean or to get cool or to cool off, or washing up for Jumu'ah, the recommended bath for Friday, 
then that does not take the place, that does not dispense, that does not enshroud and envelop the wudu. Rather, you must make a wudu either before that type of bath or shower or after that type of bath or shower. And that's because that's not necessarily a spiritual bath or shower that's removing hadith. It's not removing the uh, a type of impurity. That's that, that doesn't remove a type of impurity. A person can make a ghusl for Jumu'ah without having broken their wudu. A person could wash up without breaking their wudu. Didn't pass wind or touch the private part or anything like this. Just want to wash up to be clean or to be fresh. So you have to make the wudu before or afterwards. This fatwa here is been given by Sheikh Abdulaziz Ibn Abdullah Ibn Baz. May Allah have mercy upon his soul. And we notice a few things and we can recognize a few things. First and foremost is precision and accuracy and not mixing things up and confusing things. Secondly, is how there are things of which the scholars agree and there are things of which the scholars differ. Thirdly, is playing it safe. Fourthly, is learning the sunnah. Learning the recommended way of doing things. And when you do the recommended way, you never have to worry about difference of opinion. You never have to worry about is it obligatory, is it mandatory, did I leave off something. When you implement everything that the Prophet ﷺ did. Fifthly, is the concept of knowing these rulings when you have a little bit of time. Or when there's a little bit of water. And you know the minimum, the bare minimum of what to do and of how to wash. Sixthly, last but not least, is the different types of ghusls. Different types of ghusl. Some of them have the same ruling, such as janaba, or the ghusl from menses, or postnatal bleeding. And other ghusls are different, such as juma, or just washing up for hygiene. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surely knows best.